again, it's Cliff here from Down Under, setting up my new Slant Pro lathe and uh, getting sorted with different types of chucks and uh, V14 backplates, um, an ER32 collet and D14 backplate and uh, making up various bits and pieces like that and doing some research into 5C versus ER and uh, having a look at some of the heated debates on these subjects, um, making up different adjustable three-jaw chucks and that type of related work. So I'll do one or two, gosh it may be three videos on this, on these very interesting subjects. Okay, cheers. I've long been a fan of three-jaw chucks and adjustable to concentric three-jaw chucks, chucks that can be dialed in to concentric with a floating back plate. I've mentioned this in other videos, for example on the fourth axis and rapid turn. Um, there's big advantages with uh, three-jaw chucks um, because unlike a collet, for example a 5C collet, when you tighten it up it pulls back and it makes it very different, difficult to uh, reference the length of the part um, accurately because depending on the diameter it pulls back a different amount and while that might not matter on the first stop because you can just waste a bit of extra material and face it off um, on the second op um, you're referencing and, and you're producing on the other end on the finished end and you're producing a part of a finished length and it's uh, often problematic so most collets move lengthways as they tighten and they drag the part back with them a varying amount depending on surface finish part diameter and traction and so on the advantage of a chuck draw obviously is it just goes straight in and you don't have that problem with referencing the length with applying the part to a stop uh, so uh, I'm very keen on chucks and uh, Particularly on a CNC lathe with a turret, you don't want to have a big chuck spinning around because it just gets in the way of the tools or gang tooling even more so. You need clearance uh, between the tools um, and so this, a small three-jaw chuck is a very handy thing. Um, don't use a bigger chuck than you need to and a small reverse jaw chuck can hold small parts without uh, a large diameter. So I've been making up these D14 camlock uh, backplates for some smaller chucks that I have, a 5 inch chuck, the 6 inch chuck that comes with the machine and a 4 inch chuck and uh, I just couldn't find available anywhere conveniently uh, backplates to suit these sizes so I've just been making them up, um, it's pretty simple to turn up a couple of blanks with the uh, D14 taper on it um, and then there's a bit of work though in making the studs. I could turn up the blanks on my new Slant Pro, that's easy to do, but you need these little cutouts and uh, there's a few tricks to making those quickly and easily. I'll just take you through that. And I've just set this up to show graphically how a small truck chuck gives so much more clearance. Um, in fact, you could even put the uh, drill in the next gang position down and still clear the chuck there. See, so you can work uh, much more closely with your tooling and chuck clearance situations if you're using a smaller chuck. I know it's obvious, but um, just saying it's worth spending the time mounting some smaller chucks up on D14 backplates. There are things you can do to greatly improve the versatility of a three-jaw chuck. You can bore out the ID hole size to the absolute maximum uh, without affecting the uh, the way the chuck works and that will allow you to hold big parts inside the chuck um, I've gone over this in different videos um, and that's a real advantage because then you can uh, back to back machine quite large diameter parts in a chuck turn it around and machine another part on the other end um, you can grind the final step off a fixed style three jaw chuck um, and that avoids the 
the hangout flailing round, which is not a good thing uh, for CNC turning. It keeps the jaw within the body of the chuck, and sure, you lose some guidance length, but that guidance length is not available anyway on large diameter parts that's sticking outside the body of the chuck anyway. It's only available on small diameter parts when you don't really need it. So I see it as a win-win to grind that step off um, for most applications. I think I heard the courier. I wonder if that's my collet chuck arriving. Let's go and have a look. Big moment all the way from China. Woohoo! Maybe that's it. Looks like two parcels. And their long journey from China to New Zealand. Let's have a look. Parcel unwrapping time. Yes, it was my ER32 collet chuck. Um, I, I thought it would be easier just to buy that. It was only, I think, about 50 US dollars on eBay from China. And um, just make the back plate uh, because I just couldn't find one the right size for a reasonable price. Um, I also got some tooling in with the other, with the other parcel there. Some low-cost Chinese tooling. Uh, hopefully I'll have a chance to do a bit of a video on that too because it's, it's looking really good. Um, they, their quality's gone up in leaps and bounds in recent years and the prices are still really low. So, um, but it's early days, I need to test it a bit more yet. So anyway, uh, got my uh, ER32 collet chuck. It still suffers from the problem of pullback on tightening, but it has some advantages over the 5C in that it grips over a bigger range of diameters and I already have uh, the ER32 collets and it grips really securely over um, a bigger length. It closes down parallel, whereas the, uh, the uh, 5C system closes down on a taper and can only really hold uh, a precision diameter accurately. Probably most of you know this, these details anyway, but you can see with a 5C, uh, the uh, sprung part of the collet pivots back down here and so it closes on an angle and it can't hold different diameters uh, very effectively whereas the ER system is cut from both ends and it closes so that the bore closes parallel on the part which is a really clever design and that can close over a bigger range of diameters and grip parallel as well that's a double advantage. There's quite a bit of debate on uh, ER collets versus 5C type collets. The 5C type collets pivot at the back and then tip forward. Um, clearly, if you're gripping on a diameter smaller than a specified diameter, it's not a good idea because this happens and it only contacts in the front edge and you get a gap back from there and a gap here. Um, but there are people who defend the 5C collet system, the traditional collet system. There are others on the forums, on the net, it's quite fun having a bit of a browse, who say that the uh, ER system is a more modern system, and is, is uh, much more versatile, that it stays in contact on the uh, shaft of a, of a wide range of diameters and stays in contact on the tapers as well. And so it is a more accurate and and much more secure rigid system. Um, I probably won't venture my opinion at the moment because I know some of you will have heated points of view on it. Um, some will say that the ER system is developed for holding cutters and is not suitable for holding work. Um, yeah, the debate rages on. When I was ordering my Slant Pro, I was trying to decide should I get a lever type collet closer or the new type of compact pneumatic collet closer. And I don't really know long term what type of use the 5C system is going to be used for. So I thought I'll just make up a manual collet closer initially. Um, and then uh, after I've used it for a while, I'll, I'll be better able to choose the type of uh, collet closer. And they're easy enough to make. You can just buy a bit of uh, thick, thick wall uh, tubing, mild steel tubing, and just turn the outside. You can push one end to suit your lathe. 
uh, thread the other end to suit 5C. You can put an insertable uh, thread stop bush in there with a little grub screw that locks it in place on both the uh, sliding stop shaft and inside the uh, bore of the tube. You can buy a cheap uh, seamed thick wall tube for just a couple of dollars and bore in from each end to machine the seam off, turn the outside diameter, thread one end, pin the uh, head of the uh, of the closer on the other end. That's just got three little grub screws holding it on with spigots as per rapid turn. So that's a cheap option uh, if you just need something to get you going. You don't want to buy all the expensive equipment right from the start. Um, that was what I did anyway. Obviously you can buy back plates, D14 back plates and 5C collet draw tubes and ER uh, tooling and so on online, uh, but you've got to add the freight to that. Um, so um, in addition to reviewing these different options and uh, sh showing you different setups, I'll uh, go into some aspects of making these parts. It might be a good option for some of you guys. Well that's probably enough for now isn't it? Catch you next time.